Hi, I'm Jace Weber. This is North Missouri Woodworking on CVTV. Uh, we're going to do a, a little different project today. It's been a while since we've since we've done a new show. We're going to do something a little bit different. Uh, probably not one that you're going to see on on most typical woodworking shows. Uh, we're going to do a, a burial urn for uh, cremation ashes. And this is an actual box that uh, that the cremains go in. And uh, I do a few of these every year. Uh, not a not a great deal of them. I'm always kind of honored when people ask me to to do one for them. I'm not kind of honored. I am honored whenever people ask me to do do one of these for them because it's a pretty personal item. It's a uh, this this particular uh, commission. I actually. Uh, it's for, for a, a dear old friend of mine. I, I know her very, very well, I have for, for years. Uh, and I did one for, for her husband when he passed away uh, not too long back. And so this is going to be another, another burial learn. It's going to be pretty close, as, as close as I can get to what the, the one was that I did for her husband. And uh, we're going to be doing it out of uh, quarter sawn white oak. Uh, the original, I don't know if we can get a shot of, of it or not, but uh, we've got we've got some details on it. It's obviously it's quarter sawn white oak. Uh, we've, we've done some walnut corner keys on it here that, that helps to tie the miter together and hold everything uh, over the years. Uh, it's removable lid obviously with a coffered, coffered uh, top on it. Uh, and then just a solid bottom. Uh, so I'm going to try to do one that's that's as close to matching as that one. Uh, I don't I don't have a set pattern or anything. Whenever I do one of these, so each one of them is is usually a one-off deal. Uh, but like I said, we're going to be doing it out of quarter sawn white oak. I've got the board laid out here. It's a uh, the board that I've picked out. It's got. Got quite a bit of figure in it. The, it's it's showing a lot of uh, the quarter sawn rays that that you really want to see in, in quarter sawn white oak, uh, and this one is is pretty heavy on the pretty heavy on the rays. Uh, this board's probably uh, about uh, seven eighths of an inch thick, and we're going to take it down to about five eighths of an inch, somewhere around in there, somewhere between half and five eighths of an inch. Uh, is the stock we're going to we're going to we're going to get it down to 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 build our uh, our box out of. Uh, I did pick a board that was going to be wide enough to get the width the width of the box out of it, uh, so we don't have to do a glue up. It's not a not a bad thing to do a glue up or anything, but I like to see uh, a one width, especially on 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 lumber that's that's as patterned as this board is rather than splitting it up by gluing up two pieces of wood to get the width out of it. Uh, we're going to use up just about the full length of this board here uh, when we do this box. So I guess the first step that we're going to do, we're going to square up one edge of it and, uh, and then I'm going to run it through the thickness planer and take it down to the thickness that I, that I need to, to actually build a box out of. Uh, we're going to take it over to the table saw and rip it down to the to the correct width for the sides, and then we're going to cut the bevels on it a little bit different. The 45 degree bevels, uh, you can do this a number of ways. You can you can do it on the jointer if you'd like. Uh, you can do it on the table saw, which most people is what they do. But I'm going to do it over here at the router table today, and uh, it's very very precise when you do it like that. And uh, then the way that we're going to clamp this box up is going to be a little unique as well. So here we go. We jointed one edge of this uh, of our board. We got it straight. Uh, we're going to rip it down now. We need about for the uh, for the urn for the wide side. We need about six and a half inches uh, of material on that. And our board is about seven and a half rough. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cut this, rip this one edge down straight here. I'm gonna take it down about seven and a quarter and then we're gonna plane it to get it to the right thickness. We've got the board uh, flattened. We've had to uh, flatten the other the, fa the other face of it. And a little explanation there, Tom asked about it uh, in between shots. What a jointer will do is a jointer merely flattens one side of the board. You can't you can't plane it. It only flattens one side of a board, or what a jointer does. What a planer does, a planer mirrors what one side of the board is on the other side. So. If you, if you run a board through a planer and it's got a bump on it or it's got a warp or something or another, you run it through the planer, it's going to telegraph that to the, face of, the other face of the board. So there's no real way to get the board flat without running it across the jointer first. Then you run your flattened side on the bed of the planer and it flattens the other side. And if you noticed on, on, on that, if it doesn't get edited out, uh, there at one end of the board I was cutting quite a little bit as it was going through the planer the first three or four passes and then as it got towards the end of the board you weren't hearing any any cutting taking place at all that's because it had actually thinned the board down over on the the joiner at one end whenever I was flattening the one side so that's the difference there anyway uh, we've got we uh, we've got it planed down now to uh, half inch thick and I think that's about where we're going to stick on the on the thickness of the the stock to make the box. Uh, it's not not too thick uh, to make it clunky and everything, but still it's it's uh, thick enough to, to give it some heft. Uh, next step I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna pick out some places I want I want the the sides of the box and the, and the face the front and back face of it. I want it to be uh, out of material here on my board that's that's got quite a little bit of figure in it so I'm going to kind of pick and choose what I've got I don't have a lot of extra material in this board to get the box out of but like I said at the start it's going to use use most of the of the board uh, on this box but it will let me pick and choose a little bit here uh, so I'm going to cut the four sides uh, out of the board now and then we'll cut them to width and we'll go over here to the router table and bevel the edges of it 45 degrees and I'll go ahead and put those together so we can have those drying for a little bit. I like that. This is the back. This will be the bottom. I have no scrap left. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six. Yes. Six sides to a cube. That is correct. You know this woodwork and stuff inside and out, don't you, Tom? <laughs> Damn straight. Eight and three, give me just a second here. I'm doing my mathifications. Hey, Ciphering? Ciphering, doing my my gazettas. Eight and a quarter max. 
Okay, we've got the uh, we've got the rough cuts done on on our stuff here. Obviously, it's rough. Nothing's the same size or or uh, uh, length. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut the uh, the side, the front and the back, and the sides for uh, for the width. We're going to end up with uh, for the for the height is going to be about six and a half inches right on the nose. As a matter of fact, six and a half, or the width is going to be six and a half inches. And the sides are going to be four and a half, and we're going to end up with seven and a quarter tall. Uh, we've got to have a little bit of room. This box here is eight and a quarter inches, uh, but we've got to have a little bit of room at the bottom for the for uh, uh, the bottom overlay. It can be a rabbit cutting net and be a quarter of an inch below the our actual box, and we need three quarters of an inch up on the top for the coffered top. So the, we're going to end up with seven and a quarter sides instead of eight and a quarter. Uh, to get, end up with our eight and a quarter dimension. So I'm going to go over to the table saw and uh, I'm going to rip these rip these down to four and a half and six and a half. And, uh, then the next step we'll go back over to the miter saw and I'll finish cutting the, the actual heights and uh, we'll go over here to the router table then and bevel the edges. Six and a half. <laughs> Alrighty, we've got our uh, our front and back, or our, our uh, front and our sides and back, all dimensioned to the sizes that we want them. Uh, the next step on these parts is to cut the the 45 degree bevel on the edges where we're going to join them and we're going to make them into the box. So, like I said earlier, I'm going to do that over to router table. Uh, it takes just a little bit of setup to do that, and here we go. Okay, we've, I've already adjusted my fence and everything, adjusted the bit. Uh, all I'm going to do is just pass each side down alongside the, the bit here against the fence and uh, it'll cut a perfect 45 degree uh, bevel on the sides of the boxes. Okay, so I made a mistake because me and Tom were talking about that time on Gilligan's Island when Gilligan dreamed he was a caves man. You remember that, Tom? <laughs> and, <laughs> and he said, I can't remember what he said. What did he say? Go too far, fall off edge. Go too far, fall off edge. <laughs> so anyway, well, we were having that very intellectual conversation about Gilligan's Island going too far and falling off edge while he was dreaming he was a caveman. I made a mistake. <laughs> I should have done these in two passes instead of just one. I got a big old divot here on it. I got my edge all loused up. So this very pretty piece of wood, it's just like, it's no good. It's garbage now. So I've already went and made another one right here. We're not going to talk about Gilligan's dreams anymore. <laughs> then we're going to do this again. why I'm doing two passes in this. Uh, on my mistake piece, I took it down to a real fine knife edge. Uh, I was kind of blowing out the edge of it here and everything, which if it's uh, casework or something like that in, in, uh, on a large scale, it's not going to make a big difference in, in, in how the thing looks. When it's a small item, like this little box, or, or anything that you can hold in your hands that you're going to really be examining close. Uh, you don't want any blowed out edges or anything like that. So I've taken the bulk of the material off 
uh, with this wide pass. And I'm going to scooch the fence up just a little bit. I'm just going to skim along there and take that on down to the fine edge that I need. And uh, uh, we won't have any blowout or anything like that. Okay, the we've got our bevel cut on the on the side of the box now, and uh, a lot of times something uh, that gets gets up towards the size of this, it's a little hard to clamp it up and uh, uh, make it square, make it look right, and everything. Uh, I don't do this way of clamping it too often, but for something like this, if you're doing table legs uh, that you want quarter sawn figure to show on all four sides, I do this quite quite a little bit. Uh, but we're going to clamp this up with masking tape and uh, basically what we're going to do is we're going to layer box out inside of the box will be face down we'll stagger our pieces on here just like we've got a side and a back and a side and a front and they'll go like this and now's a good time that to give it a look that you got you uh, you've got the grain of your wood oriented the way that you want it and I'm pretty happy with this get your up and down situated right and then you're just going to push them up tight together but not not tight enough to where they're going to your edges are going to try to jump up over the top of each other. And uh, I'm going to push this down without moving anything. It's real important with this doing it this way is that nothing moves. And just lay down a strip of tape about every inch or so. Then we're going to pull off a few pieces here to have ready in a little bit. Okay, we got our, our uh, box taped up. It's laying inside out. And uh, the next step to making this work is we've got to flip it over real easy like we don't want anything to move. But we're going to turn, turn the whole mess over like so. And then we're going to run uh, just, and you don't have to get real stupid with, with putting the glue to it or anything. Uh, you just, uh, just enough glue to to get the job done if you get too crazy with it you're going to have a bunch of squeeze out inside the box and and uh, don't want that stuff to clean up and i'm going to use the old glue spreader spreader that god gave me kind of smear that out just a little bit because i can't help myself I have to do it. And as always, whenever I'm doing this on my own, I just wipe that on my pants. <laughs> so now we, what we're going to do is we're going to kind of roll this mess back together here, like so. And we've got our one edge that isn't taped, so we're going to pull it up. And when you roll this up, you wouldn't think that, that masking tape would make, make a good clamp. But as it rolls up, it actually, the, the tape is stressed, and it tightens up as you roll it. And... Uh, makes a pretty doggone good clamp and it makes 
clamping up something as odd as, as a box like this, a pretty simple thing. So there we go, we got the box glued up. The, the, uh, the miters are pulled together to the invisible point. Uh, they've, they've closed completely up. They've closed up on the inside of the box as well, which is, means that it was a, a, a nice precisely cut miter, which is what you're gonna get when you do it over on a router table like that with a 45 degree bit. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make the, uh, the top and the bottom. Uh, the bottom, I'm gonna cut a rabbit on it to where it'll have uh, some of the material is going to actually be inside of the box. It'd be this is half inch material here, and I'm probably going to going to cut about a, a quarter inch rabbit or maybe a little bit more so that it can sit sit up inside of it. I'm also going to uh, make it just a little bit oversized, where it'll it'll stick out past the edges here just a, a tiny minute amount, and we'll do that so that we can slant sand it flush. The top will also be oversized, but it's going to be oversized just a little bit more. Uh, I want about an eighth of an inch overhang on that, and of course the top is going to be made, so it's it's not going to be glued into it permanent like it'll be, uh, uh, so it can be taken off and, and the cremains put inside the box. Okay, well now we're going to cut, uh, 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 dimension the bottom of the box and uh, I'm going to cut a rabbit knit over here at the router table. Uh, I want it to set up in the box a little bit. You can still see some of it out here that'll, that'll seal up the bottom of it nice and tight. Uh, the rabbit doesn't have to be really, really tight, but you want it relatively so. And uh, I'm going to do this in two passes. I'll make one, one cut uh, on the thing that'll go pretty much uh, half, a little over half the depth that I want it to be, and then I'll move the fence and cut the rest of it. and it fits and I'm pretty happy about that we've got uh, like I wanted to do I'm, I wanted to make it a little bit oversized uh, it's impossible if you're if you're cutting this to fit the, the outside of this box it just isn't going to happen so by making it a little bit oversized when I glue this in place and it gets dry and everything uh, I can sand it or plane it to, to uh, fit the size of the box. Uh, the next step, I can, I can go ahead and glue that in. I'll go ahead and set, put some glue on that and get that started gluing up. But then the next step is I'm going to make the top the lid of the box. So here we go on that. Check one, two. Okay. Jace Weber. All right. We're back over here at the table. We still got our, our box all clamped up here with the tape clamp. Uh, I've made the bottom of the box, uh, cut the rabbit on it, got a little bit oversized here, which is what I wanted. Uh, I'm just going to glue this in and let this be drying now while we do the top. And just like we did the sides, don't go all insane with, with huge amounts of glue. Just enough to kind of do the job. I mean, if you want to go insane with the glue, go ahead. Don't blame me. clamps on this. Ah. 
Voila! Should I say voila again? No. I want to say voila again. Do it. Voila! Now I'm going to take the top. I'm going to go over here to the table saw and I'm going to coffer the top just a little bit. Coffer, he said coffer the top. Coffer the top. Coffer the top. <gasps> That's what I want. Here comes the part where we lose the fingers. Okay, I've raised that and give it a little uh, mini raised panel on top of the bo box there. Uh, obviously because you got saw tracks running down the sides here, it takes a little bit of clean up here to get that right. Uh, you can't do a great deal of, of raising here with it uh, because we still got to cut a little rabbit, a small rabbit here that's going to fit down inside the box there so the lid will stay put on there. Uh, next step I'm going to do, I'm going to go over here to the router table. I'm going to readjust my my rabbiting bit and uh, cut a little tiny rabbit around the edge of this. Okay, doke. We got uh, the top all done, cut, got the rabbit cut on there and it fits and we're going to peel this tape off of our, our box and uh, get ready to cut the little key slots in it. Uh, before we uh, do the the uh, key cut. I'm going to go ahead and flush this up here because I need to be able to set the uh, jig that I that I cut the key slots with. Uh, I need the box to set down in it all the way. So I'm going to go ahead and flush this this bottom up now that we glued in. to do this I've got a jig made that that holds the box at a 45 degree angle I'm gonna put a dovetail bit in the, in the router table and and uh, I think maybe I might have done a show once before where I did this I can't remember uh, but uh, it's a pretty cool little trick and it looks looks nice when you get done yeah. alrighty we're over here at the router table now and I've put a dovetail router bit in here I've set it pretty pretty high. I didn't want to go over a half inch because uh, uh, I didn't want to go through the corners of, of the box. I've got this little jig here that I've made and I've had it had it for years. Uh, we were kind of laughing when we were setting up here because I panicked just a little bit and I thought, oh man, my the box isn't going to fit in it. But this was like it was custom made for the thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's like there isn't room for a dollar bill to slide in it. So anyway, we, we lucked out there with that, and uh, I've set the fence over to where I'm gonna I'm gonna land uh, land the keys in about right there. And it doesn't matter where you, where you put them if you're doing doing something like this. It doesn't matter. We just whatever looks pleasing to the eye. Uh, so I'm gonna pass this over that that router bit. Do four sides, and I'm gonna flip flip the box end for end and do it four more times and that'll space out the keys evenly from from the ends of the box and here that goes
You can see we got the keys, we got the key slots cut there in these. Now the next step that I'm going to do is I'm going to use a piece of walnut and I'm going to use the bit set in there just like it's set right now. And uh, it's kind of a trial and error setup. Uh, I'll do one side of the, the stock that I'm, that I'm going to uh, run through there for the slots. I'll just run one slide through there. They don't have to jockey the, the fence back and forth to get the right thickness of it to fit my, my dovetails, but uh, it's nothing really too complicated. It's just a lot of trial and error going back and forth. Ta-da! Alrighty, I've got the uh, the stock made. It's going to be our our uh, key slot, our keys for our slots here. I'm going to trim it down just a little bit to table saw. I'm going to take a little bit mo more of this off right here. Probably slice that off about right there, and uh, and then I'll dice them up at the bandsaw into little key slice pieces about that long right there. We'll glue those in, let them dry a little bit, and then slice them off at the bandsaw and finish sanding them. Alrighty, back over here we've got my little uh, keys cut out, and I'm gonna smear a little glue on things. Yeah, keep in mind that you're gonna gonna do some sand in here, so it's you don't want to just spread glue everywhere, but you are gonna clean it up some with the sandpaper. Isn't that supposed to be the pocket hammer that's in your pocket? All that time? is the pocket hammer that is supposed to be in my pocket at all times. Did you notice it wasn't in my pocket? <laughs> I would rather they fit just a little bit looser than that, but... Oh well. This is one miter that will never ever will never ever come apart and will never need a nail in it. I don't know what they call them. I don't know if honestly, I'm like the only guy I've ever seen do these. So, I'm sure that I am not the first guy that's ever done it. Cuz that would be pretty damn weird if it were, if I were, but I've never seen anybody else do it, and I don't know what they really are called, dovetail keys. I've got them all slid in there, glued in, and I've got them chopped off. The only thing I've got left to do is just give them a flush sand them. Uh, it'll give it a real finished look. And I'm going to do that over at the Big Belt Stationary Sander. We got, it, we got it all sanded down. Uh, I've still got some finished sanding and stuff I'd like to do to it. I'd like to go over it with, with at least some 220 paper and, and uh, uh, take some of the grooves and stuff out of it we've put in there. Uh, but that's, that's basically the finished, the finished uh, 
urn there, uh, somewhat more attractive than than the brown box or the black box that that they the funeral home provides to you. Uh, hope you enjoyed the show today. It's been a little different one than than the normal that we we normally do. Uh, uh, like I said when we started, you probably. Uh, the only show that's ever been done by anybody that's demonstrated making a, a, a burial urn, but that's what we got right here. I'm glad, glad you all tuned in, and uh, thanks for watching North Missouri Woodworking on CVTV. I'm Jace Weber. <laughs> Great. All right. Are we going again now? <laughs> I gotta get it straightened up. Okay. I'm solemn. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. We've got our. <laughs>